What is going on guys, Politics Gaming here, and today I am going to be doing a new tutorial for Power and Revolution Geopolitical Simulator 4. Today we are going to be doing a tutorial for cybersecurity. We are going to be looking into ICTs, how to protect your national infrastructure, and way more on the new features of the 2018 edition. This is only exclusive to the 2018 edition of Power and Revolution. Without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get into it. All right, we are now playing as the United Kingdom. And what we are going to be doing in this tutorial is, again, we're just going to be going over how to protect your nation from cyber threats. Basically, a rundown of what cybersecurity is. It is in the Secret Service um, tab, and it is a new section of the whole um, Secret Services um tab, whatever you call it. So we're going to go ahead and come over here. We have a lot of options to actually do. One of these is actually the citizen awareness of cybersecurity. So we're going to go ahead and click that. And so if you are too poor, if your country is not that um, basically uh, rich enough to afford um, purchasing a cybersecurity plan, whether it's bronze, silver, or gold, this is a good way to actually um, adopt cyber hygiene, as you would call it. And so this basically um, gives you, like, you can still be hacked. It doesn't protect anything from being um, protected. But your citizens will have a better chance of understanding what's going on instead of panicking the entire time. So this awareness campaign takes place in a marketing campaign to inform the general surfing public of ha about habits to adopt in matters of cyber hygiene to protect themselves from uh, from the risk of being hacked this this campaign also covers both the media and social networks and includes creating an information call center why it is widely followed at its start but it will lose its effectiveness over time as the united kingdom it only costs 27.3 million dollars to actually adopt it but we're not going to do anything. Again, we're just doing this for the sake of tutorial. And our second option is to launch a cyber protection program for administrations and infrastructures. We have three options that we can adopt. We have the level of cyber protection plan of bronze, silver, or gold. Now, bronze only does the following. Training sessions to educate public staff and usage of secure messaging for all personnel a part of the administration. The um, annual reimbursement uh, varies from country to country, but bronze is the cheapest out of all three. It only costs $273 million at the beginning, and over the next five years, it will cost you $1.3 billion. It usually only takes one to three months, I believe, um, to do. Um, I think it kind of varies from country to country, but it does. it is the shortest um, amount if you need it in an emergency. So, and then we go over to silver. Silver cyber protection comes with the following. Everything that comes with bronze cyber protection, mandatory cyber security audit for state services and administrations, mandatory degree course for all administration personnel, and a mandatory ISO-CEI 27031 certification for vital infrastructures, including public safety, transportation, and suppliers of electricity, gas, and water. This is the second most expensive cyber protection plan. It usually only takes three months to implement, and it will cost you over $10 billion over the next five years. And then we go into the um, golden cyber protection plan, which comes with everything in silver and bronze, I believe, and it comes with a annual cybersecurity audit of public services, including resilience tests for vulnerable administrations, usage of a secure portable phone for all personnel, usage of audited and certified software and up operating systems, and creation of a high security ISO CEI 27040 certified data centers built underground in the national territory. This is the most expensive cyber protection plan that you can even purchase my recommendation is that you adopt the silver protect protection plan it is cost efficient 
and it gives you vital infrastructure protection for um, stuff like public safety, transportation, and suppliers of electricity, gas, and water. So usually, and I actually did this in my Canada playthrough if you've actually never seen it, which I will put here. My recommendation, again, would have to be silver. Gold is pretty good, especially if you can afford it. Again, it does give you those resilience tests. And so that's one thing. So then we go into the actions that we can take as a nation. So we have three options that we can do to um, launch cyber attacks against other national entities. So I'm going to go ahead and click Russia just for an example. We have launch a massive cyber attack. A massive cyber, a massive state-sponsored cyber attack consists in introducing viruses in the country's information systems at all levels of society and its infrastructures in order to saturate or disrupt and ultimately paralyze or knock out those systems. Some attacks are condemned by the international community, but in reality, it is very rare that anyone is able to verify the source of these attacks with any absolute certainty. This is a great way to actually um, paralyze a nation. If we were actually to launch a cyber attack against the Russian Federation, they would be ultimately on lockdown. All of their transportation systems, um, airports, ports, oil platforms, uh, oil derricks, stuff like that, all of those things would be shut down. That's what a massive cyber attack does is that whenever you actually launch it, it actually, um, all of the infrastructure that is actually in the country shuts down. It is unusable for the time being until the, until the country can recover. And it also um, makes you lose a lot of production value. So you can actually lose GDP um, worth of your economy in a, in a massive cyber attack whenever you are unprepared for this cyber attack, whether it's like you never invested in cyber awareness or you didn't invest in a cyber protection program. And another way to actually um, increase your defense measure without doing an expensive cybersecurity protection plan is actually to increase the amount of cyber analysts you actually have. That is another way to do it. So, and then let's go actually go back. Cybersecurity. And then, so the second option we have is to launch a cyber attack to rig a foreign election. This is very useful if you actually want to influence the elections in a, um, in either an ally's country or in an enemy's country. It is very easy to actually do this if you actually have a very sophisticated cyber cyber um, protection cyber terrorism network. So I can easily launch a cyber attack against the Russian election, which is being held in 2018, in March of 2018, as of the 2018 edition of Power and Revolution. But one thing that you have to take into consideration before launching a cyber attack is who is actually using the internet in it. So we're going to go to internet users in percentage of this. The Countries in blue are actually very susceptible to election rigging. Australia, Russia, um, a lot of Europe, actually. And I don't know the threshold. I believe it has to be at least 50% of the country has to be on the internet. Um, because, I mean, I'm able to rig the Russian election. I'm able to rig the Italian election. So I think about between 50 and 55% of the country being um, on the internet would actually be able to um, be riggable. And then we come to the last one, which is going to be a military cyber attack. A military cyber attack, the objective is to disrupt the target's military by, try by trying to break into military terminals. This cyber, these cyber attacks require a high level of sophistication. Um, so whenever you're going into war with someone, you actually have the option to disable their entire military so you can make, um, strategic plans, whether it's airstrikes, whether it's, um, to invade the capital, 
something like that, it disables their entire military. I don't think it disables their troops, but their tanks, their planes, their ships, it all goes down and they're unable to coordinate a sophisticated military attack against you. So that is a good way to actually um, take out a country's military. So that is enough from cybersecurity. So what I'm going to go to next is actually going to have to be the media, and we're going to go to the construction infrastructures of high-speed uh, internet. So this is how about how much of your country is actually covered by mobile telephony, uh, mobile telephones, 4G internet, broadband internet, and super high-speed fiber optic internet. Mobile telephones are just basic mobile communication, just your cell phone, satellite phones, and stuff like that. Um, allows voice communication and text messaging. Internet usage remains very limited, also almost non-existent. Installing infrastructures is relatively low cost because these are well-known technologies that have been supported for years. Today, mobile communication is indispensable for communication and security. We're going to go to 4G. The 4G network is the fourth generation of mobile communication in particular. It offers the possibility of significant internet speed, which in operation raises speeds to tens of megabits per second. The infrastructure are all costly because of the amount of cellular, cellular towers that are required to be built to actually give them service. The advantages are numerous and in multiple domains. Security, health, education, commerce, and entertainment are principal uses. And you will actually get a lot of people, especially whenever you don't have a large amount of... Uh, um, 4G internet, um, your farmers will actually complain saying that it's very hard to actually communicate whenever we don't have the ability to do that. So um, dependent, they're de depending on the state to actually um, communicate so you can actually do that since cell companies, um, mostly in the game and in real life, actually think it's too expensive and too um, inefficient to actually build cell towers in rural areas. So this gives you the ability as the state to actually fund that. And then we're gonna to go to broadband internet. Broadband internet is an internet technology that works on an existing telephone wire networks. It offers bandwidth from two to 20 megabits per second. Mostly developed since the beginning of the 2000s, it is now an aging technology forgotten in favor of super high speed fiber optic internet. The higher these go, the more expensive it gets. Which actually, for example, if I want to increase this to 75%, that's going to cost $1.92 billion. But we're going to go to super high-speed optic internet. I'm going to show you what the cost actually looks like. So super high-speed op optic internet offers internet access at speed at typically over 1,000 megabits per second. This technology most generally relies on infrastructure made up of fiber optic cables that are involved significant installation costs in low density population areas. It promotes a digital economy in domains such as HD television, video communication, telecommunicating, etc. This one is the most expensive out of all of them. So if I wanted to, to, to make 100% of the country full of uh, super high-speed internet, that would cost about $37 billion. It's a hefty price tag. So if I wanted to do 25%, that would cost $5.3 billion. You can see how these costs just kind of go up and up and up. So cost over here, this is going to be a lot more cheaper if I wanted to do 90% of the country being covered by um, broadband internet. Same thing with here. If I wanted to do 80%, of the country being covered by 4G internet, that would cost about $2.9 billion or $15 billion over the next five years. So that's actually about it from cybersecurity and cyber um, cyber internet standpoint of the game. If you guys like this, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more tutorials of Power and Revolution. If you guys have any suggestions for um, what kind of tutorial I should actually make, Go ahead and leave that in the comments below. And guys, I will see you guys in the next tutorial of Power and Revolution. Make sure to catch all of my live streams where I am playing as Canada, United States,
Um, and any other country that I may en end up playing in the future, make sure to turn on that bell notification icon where you can catch all videos that I post, including this one and future tutorials and live streams as well. So guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and take care.